Thanks thanks for accepting my invitation and accepting to talk with me. Oh, you're most welcome. So, I thought to introduce you to my audience. Okay? So, uh, can you please introduce you like yourself? To? I would love to. I would love to. Um so I, I've been coaching people for over 20 years on how to find hope in their lives. And most recently, my focus has been on helping women and men um, realize that our differences are actually very good things. Because okay. a lot of time we disconnect. Uh, we think people should answer or act the same way we do. They don't. And we think they're misbehaving. And actually all it is is we're misunderstanding them. Yeah. Uh, and I learned that for myself personally, um, I guess it's about six years ago now, my husband and I uh, were married 37 years at that time. And um, I had no clue, uh, well, actually, neither of us had any clue how much we were misunderstanding one another. We really, really loved one another, but we just kept hurting one another quite unintentionally. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun at all, you know? And I look around at the people around me and I was seeing the same thing. I thought, well, maybe this is as good as it gets. But then uh, fortunately I had a friend that sent me to a class and it was all about helping people see how much we misunderstand one another and we're actually not misbehaving. And if you'll just be curious, um, there's so much, uh, so much healing that comes in with that in your relationships because you realize the person's not trying to hurt you intentionally. You know, you're just misunderstanding them. And so it changed me and our marriage so much that I, I pursued my certification with the, the group that I'd gone to this class. It's called PAX Programs, Inc. And um, that was in 2018. I, it took me about 1,300 hours of research and training uh, and you know, teaching as I went through. And um, I, I met my goal. Um, my husband was behind me 100%. Uh, he supported me with his time and his energy and you know the funds that we had to spend. And um, uh, Friday, a couple of days from now, we will have our 44th anniversary. Uh, because uh, life, life is good. It really is good. So, and, and out of that, um, recently I wrote a book, Connecting the Present to the Past to Find Hope for Your Future. And it's, it's about everything that led up to the going to that class and how the class has changed my life to help people experience the same thing. Uh, I'm going to ask you too many questions today. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm, I am really, really excited to be here. So ask away. What, what do you want to know? <laughs> so you didn't say uh, your place of living. Where I'm living? I live in uh, Tennessee in the United States. Awesome. So coming to uh, you said that, uh, uh, you know, this is a this is a, this, this is a question that uh, most of the people don't get answer for connecting you know they get disconnected uh, for simple reasons uh, there is no I don't know I can't say that simple or big reason or small reason or whatever the reason reason is reason they, mm -hmm. they get disconnected and uh, you said that in 2017 you did uh, you started studying about it and you decided to do certification in it and uh, and mm -hmm. you decided to help the world and uh, in in the possible way right so mm -hmm. already you have a huge experience, uh, the practical experience, that personal yes. experience, right? So you yes. have seen things, you have heard things, and uh, I'm sure uh, you are you're the only person who can give uh, answers for a lot of questions to, to a lot of couples who are getting disconnected. And yes, I wanted to, you to give all the answers in this video. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll try. I don't know if I can give all the answers. We'd be here all day, but I will do my very best. So connecting means uh, they love each other, right? So first thing, the, the connection happens uh, using their senses. They connect, they see, they listen, and uh, all their five senses they use. And uh, uh, they feel like connecting with that person. And uh, both two human beings take a decision to uh, tell their feeling and 
to express their feeling about each other so one person starts telling about his feeling uh, and the uh, other person accepts it so like that uh, a connection uh, establishes yes um what i would say what you what you just said is the most important thing you can do to connect with people is listen absolutely the most important thing um and there's this tool that i tell people teach people about it's called listening to learn and what happens is um especially with women we get a real sense of safety when we feel like okay what you're saying i agree with so therefore i would be safe so if a woman disagrees with what she hears if she if she doesn't know enough to just stop she may pull back and disconnect but if you learn about listening to learn what you want to listen for is not do i agree or disagree with this person but what are they telling me about what's most important to them what matters to them and what they care about if you listen to anyone that way man or woman for those three things it's amazing what you can discover and it's actually when people listen to you that way it's a little bit intoxicating because a lot of the time when we have conversations people are thinking about how they're going to respond rather than listening to what the other person is saying so uh, a few days back in my blog i wrote a uh, post uh, saying uh, the topic name is uh, uh, understanding is the most uh, powerful and dangerous quality with mm. which a human can create and destroy things listening yeah. is also comes under understanding first thing is listening that the same you said if you mm-hmm. listen if you listen to a person to each and every word which is coming from his or her vocal cord and uh, your brain uh, if you will your brain takes that and analyzes and thinks about it and understands it and uh, then you take decision and you implement some thought and then the response depends on the thought that you implement and uh, everything is coming from like you said listening mm mm-hmm. but most of the people because of the ego in relationship in a connection because of the ego or because of the anger because of the negative emotions that they have they won't listen no a, a lot of the time sai like i we are um let's see how can i put this so it's easily understandable so if, if you think of yourself as a three part being you have sort of like a, a natural instinctual part of you and then you have like the the soul your thoughts your will your emotions and then you have more of a spiritual part of you where you you stop you make choices um and it, what happens is a lot of the time we stay in that first one i described our instincts and they happen really really fast i know we're in a very modern world but our instincts are still very present i mean have you ever hit your head on a kitchen cupboard <laughs> the, okay have you ever stubbed your toe anything like that how quickly and how intensely you respond that is actually your instinct it's there okay. all the time all the time and so if someone says something or acts a certain way that we don't understand and all of a sudden you know our our instincts go oh threat you know we don't we're not consciously thinking threat but we just tense up that that's how you can tell your instincts are at work you feel that tenseness and the way you get over to what i was saying the more all three parts of you the the energy that you have from your instincts and the abilities that you have in your will and your intellect and your emotions and then you employ choice to partner all that together you can take a deep breath that's the simplest thing to do when you're feeling threatened and take a deep breath and there's a really simple question you can ask in your own mind and if when the time's right you can ask it out loud what if there's a good reason for what they just said or how they just acted what if i'm just misunderstanding what they're saying or how they're acting but that takes choice that does not come from instinct but it makes a huge difference and, and i'm not saying i'm perfect at this i mean you know still with everything i've learned you know my husband will do something and i can feel that right away uh, you know oh why would he do that and then but i know enough now to go wait a minute 
this is the man that loves me. What if I'm not understanding? <laughs> and I take a deep, deep breath and I calm down and I give, you know, I'll ask him a question if I need clarification. And just giving people the benefit of the doubt, you know, that they're not misbehaving or simply misunderstanding. Changes your world. Yeah, it changes your world when you go to the store. <laughs> The people around you, you know, what if they're having a bad day and this is not about me? Yeah. Yeah. So can I say that uh, righteousness is the uh, is one of the major reasons why people uh, fight with each other? I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Can you say Ra what is money? Righteousness. 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 Uh -huh. Is one of the reasons why people get uh, uh, disturbed and uh, fight with each other. I think that would be an accurate statement, Sai. I mean, they have a sense of that they are right um, and uh, the other person's wrong. And, you know, that that's a pretty big assumption to make because you don't know what that other person is thinking. You're assuming yeah. what they're thinking. <laughs> you know, it gets a little, you know, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't feel good on the other side either, right? When somebody comes at you that way, it's like, hey. <laughs> so, and um, I actually had that happen this week with my husband. I'm trying to remember the details. I don't, but I said something that he felt disrespected. And I had to go back and say, I'm sorry. I intended no disrespect. I was trying to provide maybe an, another option for you to do this. And he just took it like I didn't think he knew what he was doing. And I was like, well, no, sorry. That was that was a misunderstanding. Yeah. So it is impossible for two people to think in the same way. Do you mean identically? In any, it can be on anything. It can be about anything. They can't think in the same way, two human beings. I think they can have similar points of view about how they want to live, but to think identically, no. When you start when you start hearing in your thoughts or start hearing yourself say to other people, you should, you should, you should, mm -mm. it's, it's <laughs> you, I call it shooting. Don't shoot on people. You don't know where they're coming from, you know, and you have to, um, yeah, just be willing to find out why Whatever they're talking about is important to them, what it means to them. Um, maybe, you know, simple things like maybe like if I'm listening and somebody says something, maybe I'm tired, maybe I'm hungry, maybe I had a bad day and I just don't have the capacity to respond well, you know. And it, so I, I think I got a little bit off track from your question, but, you know, it's not that we don't think similarly, but we're not thinking identically because my world at that moment is very different from your world at that moment. My my senses, my being. Only in that moment? Every moment, right, Sai? I'm I'm I could think I'm seeing it's nighttime where you are and I'm standing here looking out at the beautiful blue sunny sky. That's gonna make me happy. You know? <laughs> so um yeah, it doesn't mean we can't connect. I think that's that's the point. We don't have to be the same to connect. We can appreciate our differences. Um, we can appreciate what they contribute to each other and how they complement one another. Act actually, in one of my teachings, this just popped into my thought. I, I have this slide and I have a picture. It has a picture of a lime and a picture of an avocado. And I ask people, uh, you know, I say, okay, this slide, both fruit, both of these are fruits, both of them are green. Would it be reasonable to bite into that avocado and expect it to act like that line. That's what we do with people. You're a person, yeah. I'm a person, you should think and feel the way I do. No, but if you mix them together, I really like lime and, and avocado. I, I love guacamole, I think it makes great food. But it's because they're different that they contribute to one another so well. Can I say that people who understand the definition of a different and difference uh, can live happily on this planet with each other? Yes. Yes. If you're willing to accept 
that different is good and different can benefit one another, yes, we can live happily on this planet. Can I say expecting nothing from each other can make their uh, life uh, look so beautiful? Expecting nothing. If you don't tell the other person what you're expecting, um, there's going to be problems. If you tell them that, you know, um, what what your expectation is. Like, I expect to spend so much time with you today or something, then expectations are okay. But it's the hidden ones. It's like, you should know that I want you to be around today because I'm having a bad day. Doesn't work. Those kind of expectations only end up in trouble. If I'm having a bad day and I need my husband to be around, I have to tell him, hey, I need some support today. When would be a good time for us to just sit down and talk? rather than just expecting him to read my thoughts. That happens only when you express. If not, he don't know that uh, you you want him to be with you. Exactly. You yeah. should express. You should, exactly. Well, I, I don't want to use the word should. Life will work better when you choose to express your needs. And when you choose to own them, that's personally what I've discovered on this journey is I did have an expectation for the people around me to make me happy. But if you asked me what would make me happy, I didn't know. It took a lot of work on my part to figure out what would make me happy to own it and then be brave enough to share that with the people around me. And the one I'm thinking of specifically is actually getting my certification. You know, I, I had to, when I thought about it, when I thought about all the time, all the money, uh, I was working full time at that, that point. I was like, you know, do I really think I want this and I can do it? And the answer was yes. And when I, I was so scared to ask my husband, because I thought, well, what if he says no? <laughs> you know, that, that question goes off in your head. Well, what, you know, I don't know if I even want to ask, because what if he says no? And when we had the conversation, he just looked at me and said, absolutely. Find out more about it interview see you know as you go along you'll know more about it and he was so supportive um as i went through the process you know i had to apply be interviewed then i got accepted and my my reaction was oh my gosh what have i done <laughs> what have i signed up for you know and he could see i was afraid and he came in and he immediately looked at me and goes i don't have to believe in packs i believe in you was like, okay, there's my rocket fuel. He thinks I can do this. He thinks it's going to make a difference. That's what I need. Can I say a boy and a girl, uh, both are extroverts. They can be comfortable all the time. Extroverts, is that the word you use? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. extrovert. Yeah. If both are extroverts. Yeah, they just have to make space for one another. So that uh, every time uh, what they feel, they express, they just throw out their emotion. They, they, they will not put anything in their mind or in their heart. Every time when they express, I think uh, that is the best way for each other to understand each other. And uh, I think that makes uh, uh, their connection uh, 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 becomes so stronger. Because only when you yeah. express, uh, only when you express, and only when that person expresses uh, in the same way uh, you express. So it, there will be uh, you listen to that person and he listens to you. So when there mm -hmm. is listening, there will, you will be thinking. When you will be thinking, you will be understanding. When you will be understanding, there will be no fight. Uh, well, I wish I could say there would be no fights, but we are human. There are instincts. Um, but... I think what happens when you become so aware of this is if, if there is a fight, you can stop it. You don't have to go down that road of it just getting worse and worse and worse. You can go, oh, wait a minute. What's going on? Let's, let's call a timeout. Let's, you know, each take a deep breath. Let's, let's see what's going on. And, um, and, and I think I need to go back just a bit. I misunderstood your definition of extrovert, like somebody just saying what they think all the time. To me, an extrovert is somebody who gets their energy from being around other people. So um, as far as blurting out your feelings, um, 
you need to, um, how can I put this? You need to be respectful of the other person's space, their emotions, their time space, their, their physical needs at that time, as well as hold your own space. You, you can't not honor yourself like I need to share this with you, but you can ask. There's something I need to discuss with you. When would be a good time for us to discuss this? That's respectful. That's sharing. But it's not expecting that person to immediately divert their attention, time, and energy to you just because you need it at that moment. Can I say that uh, self-love is one of the major reasons why uh, uh, the friction happens in the connection? Oh, yeah. If you can't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. I mean, if it increases. Pardon? If uh, self-love increases. Yes. Once you, once you learn how to love yourself, um, you can love the people around you. If you can accept yourself, the person you know the most and the best, you can love the people around you. And that's, I think that's where people, my personal point of view is people get hung up and they try to love everybody else and they don't like themselves. I mean, and, that my question is, uh -huh. my question is, what if self-love increases than love on the partner? What if self-love increases? Than the love on the partner? Yes, you, that's the order. Love yourself. Consequence. Then... What, is, what is the consequence of uh, loving uh, yourself more? I mean, I'm loving more, I, I'm loving a mm -hmm. lot myself. Right. So mm -hmm. when my partner comes, you know, uh, I start loving her and uh, uh, but still I love myself more than her. So if my, if I love myself more than her, definitely that creates problem because I will say I'm right all the time because I love myself. That is if, oh. it, if it increases the love okay. on myself is more than the love on the person who is connected to me. OK, so I see where we're disconnecting right at the moment is my definition of love and your definition of love. <laughs> what do you mean when you say you love on yourself? I love my mental and physical energies. Okay. But the word love itself, if you had to use another word, what would it be? I like. You like? Okay. So in my the way I look at love is acceptance. If I love you, I accept you just the way you are. Okay. And so if I can grow in accepting myself, I can grow in accepting you. So see, that's okay. We just discovered a difference about you and my, you and I as well. So that, that's okay. Is that possible for everybody to find uh, the person uh, who can accept themselves as uh, themselves? You're talking to one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some days I'm a little nicer to myself than other days, but I do accept myself. Yeah. I, I have gotten to the place in my life where I accept who I am. Um, years ago, I heard somebody tell me that if you have to do anything to be loved, it's not love. Love is accepting people just as they are. It rocked my world at the time. I mean, I, I didn't know what to do with it because when I would tell people I love them, I, it was immediately followed by, I will do anything for you. So I was actually trying to perform enough to get them to love me back. And uh, I've, you know, it's, it's been over 20 years since I heard that. And I've just been learning to be in that place of knowing so I don't define myself by what I do anymore. I define myself by who I am. And for me, the five highest values that I have that make me me are hope, love, joy, authenticity, and healing. If I can't leave anything else to the people in my world, I want to leave them those five things. So... You have 37 years of experience, which is more than my age. <laughs> right. About connection and I'm talking about connection with, <laughs> with, with, the, with the person who is 
who whose experience is uh, older than me older mm-hmm. than my age so i have small amount of information that i will say i know that i don't have any practical experience since i'm i didn't uh, live on this planet like you did i mean the the age mm-hmm. so so connect connection connectivity so you you said uh, you will accept that person i'm sure in this 37 years you might have experienced uh, uh, or you might have faced a situation where uh, you was extremely emotional and you are not ready to listen to your partner mm, correct so what after that what happened after that um now i have enough experience to say we just need to stop this okay. is not going to end well we need to literally take a break <laughs> you know step away and come back when we can you know not be like i said in that raw instinctual you know uh place and i can actually be all of who i am <laughs> i can have you know my will my intellect my emotions the power to choose you know and use intangible qualities like understanding and compassion and curiosity until i can get back to that we just need to stop if we if on you know things times have happened when you know put my hand up i i have not done that and i've gone down the road of being just completely angry and i usually after i get away for maybe i don't know sometimes it's a few hours sometimes it's a day i'll realize oh my gosh what if my husband or whoever was actually not saying what i was hearing okay what if you know my filter for whatever you know it means to me triggered my anger i trying to think so i if i can think of a time that someone has intentionally tried to hurt me i can think of one it wasn't my husband um it was a person i was working with and it hurt so bad i actually had to leave like, like it wasn't physical it was emotional and so i left but i made the choice uh within a few hours to think you know what they're not going to um determine what my world was what my world is i mean it was with a group of people and i didn't want to lose connection with everybody so i went back in and i was very quiet and the person who did it actually pulled me aside afterwards and apologized they okay. said i i was wrong i i i forget they were having something was going on and they were you know not having a good day and i just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and i got it and just not attacking them both of us having kind they actually came back and apologized so i i guess what i'm saying is that if you can stop yourself that's the best thing to do but if not don't hesitate to go back and um have the conversation that needed to happen when you're more rational can i say sorry works in the connection can you say can i say sorry sorry works in connection oh my gosh sorry is a reset button yes <laughs> it's a reset button sorry is a reset button not not my apologies because that kind of has a sense like well you know you know i'm apologizing but i don't really think it's my fault saying i'm sorry so much power in that what about ego tell me what you mean by ego <laughs> same uh, the righteousness right like, oh the, the okay i know i know what to do i i will do like this this is my choice i okay. i know better than you i uh, i know better than you about myself so don't give me advice so you you are coming more into me or uh, you should be far from me so you are mm. you are involving me you are involving more into my uh, topics or in my things 
so you should be in your control so it's like separating like you are different and me is different mm-hmm. and is ego okay um so i and you want to know how that impacts connecting right that part of you yeah yeah i think the most important part of dealing with ego is respect respect for yourself cuz you don't want to disappear you are who you are and if if you try to be something different the people around you lose the essence of you like if like we would lose your curiosity and your uh i just your ability to interview people and and uh, I was amazed at how different people were that you interviewed but they all seemed to have this I want to make the world better. Yeah. And I loved how you brought that out in people and you have the courage to do it to ask and to do it and so if you for whatever reason your ego if you thought well that person didn't seem to like me on the interview or whatever and you stop being you we all lose. So first you have to respect yourself. All right. But then you have to respect the person across from you as well and who they are. And um what's coming to me is one man that I did research with. Uh he was talking about people trying to give him advice and he said if you try to correct without connecting first, we're just fighting. Okay. So there has to be a relational quality there before you can try and correct someone. So what about the people who gives advices without asking? Well, you can always say thank you, I'll consider that and walk away. <laughs> okay. You, Which means accepting the accepting the advice. No. You can just say thank you for providing that. Once like if if somebody gives you a gift, say for your birthday, you can look at them and say, "Oh, thank you for, you know, taking the time to give me this gift okay. and anything else you want to say about it so you the gift is there now what you decide to do with that gift when you leave you determine the future of how you use that gift you can just look at it when people give you advice you can look at it the same way thank you you spent time and energy to provide that you don't have to tell them when you leave you decide okay yes i'm keeping that advice or that's going in the trash <laughs> okay so when it comes to connection i have a person who is connected to me right now so mm-hmm. she accepted me like uh, i am so she mm-hmm. does she she don't uh, uh, wantedly or intentionally uh, wanted to change me or she don't try to uh, pressure or she don't change anything she accepted mm-hmm. me like i am so yes. uh, i am the person like you like you are yeah that that's so, a tremendous Yeah, sigh for someone to accept you just the way you are. That is uh, amazing. You know, you feel very very comfortable uh, to talk anything with that person. You know, mm-hmm. you can sit in such a way, you can uh, drink water in such a way and uh, in in your way you can sit, you can talk. There is no when there is no judgment. Mm-hmm. There is no judging. The person is not judging you. Be like this, do like this. Yeah. You know, before I have a person who will always tell me whether when I want to talk with that person or she wants to talk with, are you free? Mm-hmm. Are you free? Can I talk? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have free time? So can we yes. can we have chat or tell me the right time when we can talk? Yes. So if it is emergency, yes. that person will take mm-hmm. time and uh, mm-hmm. give me time. so like yes. that uh, my connection is very very stronger and we connected very fast actually we didn't to, actually i have seen people who are who are disconnected after 2 years spending time mm-hmm. with each other 2 years yeah. or 3 years or more 10 years there are a lot of connections in the world mm-hmm. so disconnecting even after being with each other understanding looking at each other listening to each other for a long time in one under one roof Mhm but still they are unable to connect with each other mm-hmm. i know this kind of people but i don't know how this happened to me uh, she says that we have uh, that she used she uses a word called uh, spiritual no not spiritual she will say uh, cosmic cosmic connection okay 
she uses that word i don't understand it but i feel that i am so much connected with her uh, with uh, the, the with the mind you know mm-hmm. she can understand even if i don't talk she, i will okay. understand her even she don't talk even her silence also gives me a message that i am feeling like this so like even an expression the eyeball movement or uh, the eyebrows just uh, mm-hmm. you know the 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 you know i know when she is going to smile i know the <laughs> symptoms so yeah. in that way we are like keen observers about each other we observe each other a lot maybe because we spend time with each other a lot mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. why the reason we can i say the people who are spending time less with each other can't be connected so stronger since they don't have time to watch or listen to each other Okay. Make the question a little more concise. Can, can people connect with that less time? Is that what you're saying? By spending less time, to, having can, stronger can connection. Can they do that? Yeah. Is that um, possible? I don't think that's a one size fits all. I think it depends on the person, uh, because um, you use the word extrovert and introvert. Like if a person is an introvert like the way i understand it they they recharge by being alone you know maybe going out in nature reading things that's how they get their energy back so that person may spend less time with you that doesn't mean they won't connect with you so, so i think that really depends on the the person themselves how much time they need to be together um i've i've lived it both ways with my husband he um when we first met he was traveling a lot for his work and we might go a month without seeing one another and uh, then we'd be together for a few days and then um now we're fortunate we get to stay in the same city and we're here together and but you how do i want to put this don't waste the time you have together by talking about the time you don't have together wow <laughs> this is very good <laughs> and i just need to take one second my Your pod fell out. Let me just pick it up. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Okay. So I want to know what worked for you to be uh, with each other and without disconnecting. What works what, for us when we're apart? What worked for you personally? I'm sorry, yeah. Sai. I mean, <laughs> I will tell you a, 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 a example. What works? for uh, to uh, for a couple uh, to be with each other for a long time what is working between them oh um choosing one another okay yeah every day choosing one another um i got a whole new insight into this i thought i understood it um but when i was doing my research my, my husband like i said was very supportive he was my first research candidate and my first student in every topic that i did through my certification and i was researching with him about competition because men and women see it very differently and um i asked him i said how do you win during the day when you and i are interacting okay and he told me he said am i competing to make you smile to make you laugh. Hell yes. He says there might be somebody else out there that tries to do that and they might do it better than me. Mm-hmm. That was like at that time we were married more than 37 years. So I think we were at that point we were up to like 40 years. And it it literally took my breath away. This man every day he's competing for me to choose him. When you live like that I mean that's it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be golden. Fantastic. This is a great advice actually. You didn't uh, you didn't said uh, your experience actually you said uh, advice. You gave mm-hmm. advice. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very big time like right? 37 years means a lot of minutes, a lot of mm-hmm. hours, a lot of days. Yeah. Right, a lot of experiences. a lot of locations situations and people and climate 
I like yes. it. And uh, environment, house, things, things, the TV and uh, the mobile phone. They are changing. Things around you are changing. But why mm-hmm. you are not? Why you both are not changing? You have to know what's most important to you. Okay. Okay. And those other things don't hold a candle to me being able to be with him. Wow. Okay. So you should know. I mean, you are telling that uh, I should know what is important for me. Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do some. Uh, what if scenarios in your own mind, like, okay, if I had to choose between this woman that you're connected with or this, what would I choose? I, actually, you're telling the psychology. I what? You're, you're telling the, uh, the psychology of a connection. Yeah, I Connections, guess so. mm-hmm. relation psychology. Mm-hmm. So you are talking about uh, what works. So this is amazing. So in different countries, there are different laws, right? Mm-hmm. Different countries have different laws. Different lands have different laws. India, mm-hmm. Bangladesh, Japan, China, England, mm-hmm. UK, and Canada. So mm-hmm. I, I, I was uh, one day there, there was a discussion happened between me and uh, my girl, mm-hmm. and uh, she, she, she. She was trying to tell that uh, a particular system works to be connected with each other. Mm-hmm. I said there is no such system. You know, somebody is following. She is talking uh, great about that system. You know, you have to, you know, that, that system actually works. And she's praising literally in, in front of me. And I'm not into that system. I don't like that system. I don't connect with that system. Mm-hmm. So I was against the system. But... Uh, she was the, the the friction happened for some time and i was mm-hmm. very angry and i said you know she was uh, uh, she was giving the examples of uh, the people who disconnected mm-hmm. and i said i know people who are connected so here itself we have difference in thinking so mm-hmm. there is no match there is mismatch in uh, the the examples so maybe you have seen people who are disconnected. Maybe I have seen people who are strongly connected with each other mm-hmm. by understanding uh, and by taking each other like they are. Yeah. So I said her that the only way to be connected with each other is to understand each other and take them like they are. Like you should not even try to change. If they are allowing you to uh, give advice to them, it is okay. Mm-hmm. You you have right. I mean, you can give advice only if they are ready to take. Right. Yeah. And you that can't... applies. That applies for that person also. Mm-hmm. The same. Both yeah. should have the right. same uh, kind of uh, thinking, bo- understanding, mm-hmm. and l- looking at things. How you are looking, and that person should have. And she talks about honesty, authenticity, loyalty, loyalty. Mm-hmm. And all these are the things which makes uh, uh, two people to connect with each other. I said, don't give me advices. I mean, don't talk about what somebody is doing, what working for somebody that may not work for us. You are right. different. You came from, you have different experiences. You are from different country. I'm from different country. And y- your experience and my experience may not match with the experience of the examples, examples, uh, couples that you are giving. So... That is completely wrong. And uh, I am telling you that is wrong because you are talking with me. Mm-hmm. That is affecting me. Mm-hmm. So I don't have right if you are telling to other person. that That's up to you. But you are talking with me. I am getting affected. My mind is taking your words, which I don't like. That connection, I don't like. She was, so she was, she, for some time she was like pressing it. Like she was mm-hmm. trying to uh, you know, uh, tell that that is wrong, right? I said mm-hmm. that you might have seen people who didn't connect with you in that way or uh, 
you might have observed or uh, or uh, uh, or have, and also before connecting with me she have very a uh, negative opinion about uh, men and mm. when i connected she understood that god is there <laughs> <laughs> because uh, i am taking her like she is and uh, i am kind of a person my my video series are the example i am taking people like they are yeah so there is no judgment you know i'm just trying to project what exactly they are what they think and like there is no time limit for my channel uh, i am allowing them to talk uh, uh, completely and uh, tell what exactly they are feeling some people may want 5 15 minutes some people need 2 hours or maybe more when i am giving so that that actually makes them feel comfortable so mm-hmm. main thing is if if you are making a person to feel comfortable with you while talking and while listening mm-hmm. i think that is what the connection is yes yeah and you're very good at it i'm very very good that's why the reason i'm surviving <laughs> i'm still doing videos and talking about it with you and you connected with me right now that is one that is the yeah. major reason and that is the only thing that works in any, in any kind of uh, a connection but not every connection will be like this because of the intelligence level not everybody has same percentage of intelligence and understanding connectivity experiences main thing the bad experiences mm-hmm. that they have they they carry that yeah. and yeah. i said don't see what you have seen already i'm different yeah. Yeah. you are seeing a new visual yeah. new sound so t- you you are going to listen new things from me that you mm-hmm. have not listened and because i'm not your experience i came for the first time i have my own identity my name is sai charan there is no other sai charan with this kind of face and structure having this kind of mentality or collection of thoughts yeah so if you are ready to take like this i am okay but if you are not just let me know yeah well said beautiful so that applies for everybody i think that place is what for everybody that, that applies that philosophy applies yeah. for everybody i think yeah I, I, it's what we've been saying today for sure you need to honor yourself first be who you are are uh, accept yourself and then fill your world with people that accept you if they don't that's okay not yeah. everybody's going to you know be a match that's okay but um yeah that that's what, exactly what we've been talking about today what about forcing forcing the person doesn't work i tried for years <laughs> okay <laughs> i i can now confess that right up front yeah <laughs> well i i tried for a long time um to try and uh to try and fix us because you know we we were like all men and women we were misunderstanding one another that's what i didn't get i didn't know that I was misunderstanding. So in not knowing I was misunderstanding, I was trying to fix what was wrong. There wasn't anything wrong. Neither one of us were misbehaving. Once I went to my first class, I realized um they they you know give me a lot of tools and stuff to do. I realized I had never really seen my husband for who he was. I saw him as a large, hairy and very misbehaving woman. because the only thing i had to use as a reference point was how a woman would respond to that comment or situation or anything that was going on and so when he didn't respond like a woman he was misbehaving that you know that i had no language for that i didn't understand it i just knew it felt bad when he didn't react the way i would but now i understand it and that's what i'm trying to help people get that wow we just don't see how much we are misunderstanding one another and we um we punish the people around us because we think they're misbehaving we think they're intentionally trying to hurt us and they're not for the most part there are some evil people in the world i i won't you know say there aren't but for the most part we're misunderstanding one another tell me about before connection and after connection i mean before marriage and after marriage uh if i mean my relationship with my husband before marriage uh, gen, uh your 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 uh, uh, observation the before connection you know 
uh, I'll give you an example. So, I know a couple uh, uh, who used to connect, uh, who, who used to meet uh, uh, by uh, living in their own houses mm-hmm. before. And they, they started uh, meeting and they started uh, exchanging words. They started understanding by living in different houses. But uh, once they come uh they decided to live in a one house not in mm-hmm. being in two houses they can see the real images of each other like you know ah. before <laughs> before marriage they will expect like you know while put, while they'll be uh, uh catching their mobile in the phone and they'll be sending messages to each other mm-hmm. uh you know they'll be imagining a lot about each other like this is the world when we get mm-hmm. connected after marriage you know the world is going to be like fantasy world like where only the <laughs> heaven will be there only the good will be there only positivity only the extraordinary so yeah. only the, the the good only the, the yeah. imagination you know imagination has no limit right it can they can they can imagine whatever they want so after yeah. they physically coming together and living under one roof they see you know the image that uh, that uh, they saw in the imagination mm-hmm. is not matching with the image in the reality <laughs> yeah Abs- no that's um yeah <laughs> reality is the best word for it um and because you know when you're i would call it dating when you're living in different houses and you know you're not together all the time you can you know you have time to look good get your makeup on make sure your hair is good all that i mean you yeah. have time to do all that yeah. stuff right correct correct and, yeah <laughs> and um now for me personally um my husband and i met um in a, a band um we both musical and we were uh, on the road and um it was it was very strict the girls could not be with the boys but we literally saw one another 18 hours a day from the first day i met him because we had rehearsals and shows and traveling on the bus and then everybody gets set to their separate hotel rooms so literally i mean we didn't date we didn't go on our first date until we'd been engaged for 6 months because we couldn't we were in this this um i don't know what you'd call it like fishbowl or whatever you want to call it this this world where we were traveling all the time to do these shows and we were constantly with one another so we knew what it was to see somebody, you know, um not have their best day, not look their best, you know, get tired, all that kind of stuff. We but um it it is um it is different when people just date and they don't have the experience, you know, and um you know, depending on what your beliefs are, um you don't have to you know have a sexual relationship with someone and and still spend a lot of time with them you know whatever works for someone and we didn't we chose to wait but we spent a lot of time together and we knew one another pretty well before we got married so it it's definitely worth it because if you're living in that fantasy world you're in for a rude awakening <laughs> okay So what about physical connection physical connection makes uh, the the mental connection more stronger uh, yeah I, i would say yes mm-hmm. yeah it's um yeah it, it's a pretty strong drive you know to be connected with someone like that so yeah and it makes a, if there's actually hormones involved uh with women that that they will bond like you know if women like have like about 2 weeks after something like that that they are literally bonded because of their hormones like they're thinking about that person all the time so it definitely strengthens connections what about the people who uh, have a physical connection but still fail in mental connection well i've not lived that sai so i would just have to say i don't think things are going to go well we are multidimensional people and if you're only connecting on one dimension it's it's not going to go well it can be any connection it should be both right physical should be there and mental should be there yeah uh, yeah all yeah all aspects of you you should be uh connecting with the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with 
but uh, when you are a good listener and uh, the other person is not good listener that, that that also will be the reason for the friction yes yes but it's because, amazing uh, because the other person thinks that uh, takes the listening as an advantage and thinks that i'm right that's why the reason you are you are listening yeah it's um what was i going to say I don't know. Lost that thought. Sorry. <laughs> listening. Hmm. Listening. Yeah. One person um, is listening, another person is not listening. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, that's. You would have to have that conversation with the person, like, like if they're constantly interrupting you, or um, if they just don't want to hear what you have to think what you have to say. Um, yeah, you want to wonder if you want to spend your life doing that. You know, if they're not open to looking at doing things differently. And oh, I know what I was going to say. It was amazing. Once I learned about listening to learn what, what matters, what's important, what a person cares about. Not only did I learn a lot more about the people around me, but they wanted to learn more about me. Being listened to that way tends to make you curious. And that's one of the best intangible qualities we have. You, you have it in abundance to connect with people when you're curious. You know, and who is it? Um, I, it's a quote. I, I'm, I can't take the, the originality for this, but it's a quote that be curious, not judgmental. And that just opens up your world. I remember uh, one day my girl said that you're boring. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I want her to see this video. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I already, you know, before connecting, I already uh, said that I didn't create any fantasy world. I never said that I'm going to do big things or, you know, I'm going to be mm -hmm. great. Like, you know, I'm going to be, make you feel comfortable all the time. I said the worst mm -hmm. first. I want to check whether he's ready to uh, connect with the worst. Mm. Wow. I want to check because I want to know whether, uh, you know, whether I, the, the person with whom I connected is uh, ready to uh, live with me uh, in any situation, even if I wear different dress, I put different color to my hair, or if mm -hmm. I may be in a different job. So yeah. I just wanted to check. I will tell different thoughts wantedly. Mm -hmm. And I will check whether she is still taking me like I am, or <laughs> she <laughs> wanted me to... Uh, show to her uh, friends or she, her family to in other mm -hmm. way maybe she's imagining like you know like that i i said that i am not going to i'm not your imagination i am me um oh. i am me i have you know i have studied this i have this kind of thoughts i can do this i cannot do that so mm -hmm. i told them bad good ugly worst extraordinary fantastic great mm -hmm. stupid everything i said yeah. everything I just wanted mm -hmm. to watch her. I'm not. I'm not saying that it is not that I'm bad or negative. Just want to check whether she can take that. But I'm sure you know. I'm. T I didn't told that all this to her, but through this video, she will know that I. I checked her a lot of times whether she. She. She is able to accept me. But I'm very. Uh, you know. I. I should uh, thank the creator. Creator uh, who created her. Because uh, that work, she she did. She's like fantastic woman. She's an amazing woman, and uh, she she said, "Do whatever you like. You should be happy." And I love you. <laughs> That's a gift, Sai. That's a big <laughs> gift. I am happy for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about what do you say about insecurity? In connection. What do I? Insecurity. Um, your. My experience is that someone that's insecure and looking for the other person to make them secure doesn't work. 
and security has to come from within. I mean, security has to come from within. It's again, it's loving yourself um, because because if you if you're insecure about yourself and you number one, you're going to be a huge drain on the person you're with. You know, love me, love me, love me, prove you love me, love me, love me. You know, it's just a drain, and that's not something that they were created to be. And the the other one is that if you're insecure about yourself, you're gonna be insecure about them. Well, you know, questions like, you know, well, you said hair color. What if I change my hair color? Are they still gonna love me? What am I, there, it, it's just, it's not a good place to be. Yeah, yeah that, that, I think if you're feeling that insecure, my the prayer that I give to the eternal is reveal me to me. Why do I think this? Why do I, you know, what am I believing about myself and where did it come from? I've, I've put some of those tools in my book about, um, you know, some of the things that I, I call them weeds. Weeds get planted into our life as we're children and growing up. And, um, and, and I'm sorry, seeds get planted into our life and some of them become weeds. Some of them become um, beautiful experiences that we grow from. Some of them make us strong. All these different types of seeds get planted into our life. And sometimes those weeds, you know, weeds can get pretty big and they can choke out life. They can choke out a lot of stuff in a, in a garden. They can do the same thing in your life. And so, and that's one of the things in my book, I help people say, okay, you can go through this, ask these questions and kind of get a, a feeling for, okay, do I want to keep this belief system about myself? Is it valid or is it holding me back? And I need to make the conscious choice to believe other. Not easy. And it, it takes courage, quite honestly, because a lot of the times we're afraid of what we'll find when we look at ourselves. And also one of uh, one of the things that I did is, uh, you know, uh, before COVID or uh, before this year, I mm -hmm. I was uh, I was into gym and all the time I used to have very good body, huge, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, very good looking body in my previous mm -hmm. photos. And I, and I just wanted to change something. I want to become lean. Like, I mean, I become, I want to become completely slim and I want to check whether she can accept me. You know, I want to <laughs> habituate to her. You yeah. know, not every day you eat the same food. Mm -hmm. Not every day you will see me in the same dress. Not every uh, month or every year you see me in the same way. So I just yeah. want you to be ready uh, for the for the slim body. Whether you can still love me, mm -hmm. you can still take me. Then I, mm -hmm. I, 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 in sim in simple words, I'm sure a lot of people who watch this video. I I have I wanted them to know my story that um, <laughs> I have shown my worst to her before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and still I'll whenever I get time I will send some negative thoughts wantedly and I want to see, but not as uh, taking an advantage. Just uh, sometimes when she is very extremely. Uh, uh, positive about me, I will I will tell like this, but not every time I'm wrong, I'm right. But sometimes uh, she 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 don't like it. Sometimes yeah. uh, she she says uh, I don't agree with this. So so. But that's I want okay, that, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, I want that difference. Actually, I don't want her yeah. to accept me every time. Also. Yeah, I mean, a a, a relationship, a partnership, Sai. It takes two people, not one person and a copy of that person. It takes two very different individuals. Kind of back to my limes and avocados. You want those differences. You want to complement one another. Why be in a relationship if you just want a copy of yourself? You've already got the real thing. Yeah. Correct. So what 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 works exactly in a connection? I want to know the specific points. What works? Um, I think we've already touched on it. Listening, acceptance, 
I'm sorry. Okay. Um, this this smile is this smile is coming yeah. from the acceptance of the truth. I did. <laughs> and, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and um, appreciation. Huge, huge. Um, you know, sometimes when we get into day to day routines, we forget to appreciate what the person that's with us is doing. And um, my husband and I have really made an effort, just things like dishes or taking out the trash or, you know, thank you for doing that for me. Not just thank you for doing it. Thank you for doing that for me. When somebody expresses that to you sincerely, I mean, it makes it worth it, right? Suddenly, you've made a positive difference in that person's day. And you're like, you know, especially if you've had a bad day. It's like, oh, I made a difference. That's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. So appreciation is huge. And, and you know, I, I have to say I'm guilty of it. And, and I've seen other people. People will think, well, they should just know I appreciate that. They should just know I'm grateful. I shouldn't have to tell them. Sorry, doesn't work that way. How does it feel to you when somebody doesn't thank you? Yeah. Doesn't feel good. And like, what do you lose? What, why would you not want to express your appreciation? Okay. So... Is there any uh, situations in in your in your experience that uh, that uh, that are peculiar? I'm sorry. What's the last word? That are like peculiar. 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 Yeah. peculiar. Help me out there. What do you mean by peculiar? <laughs> I mean everybody's lives are different. So what what do you? Which you cannot forget. Oh, a okay. A it can be bad or good. Bad or good. Wow. Hmm. Bad or good. Um. I, I'm gonna tell you, kind of like you said, you were watching. Uh, you see the facial expressions and everything on your uh, the woman that you love. You see that on her face. So uh, 10 years ago, my mom passed away. And I remember very distinctly uh, being at the graveside. And it was a very cold winter day, uh, real blue skies. And I was standing there, and my husband was just a few feet away. And I didn't say a word to him. But I was just standing there thinking and uh, all of a sudden, he walked up behind me, stood behind me, and put his arms around me. And he was literally my strength to lean against. And that's, I mean, he knew. I didn't have to say a word. He knew what I needed, and he provided it. And it's stuff like that that just makes life pretty wonderful. Wow. Oh. Uh, tell me the happiest moment in your life with your person. I don't think it's happened yet. It didn't happen. <laughs> Not yet. I mean, we have so many wonderful moments, but I just, um, I've just retired out of corporate America. I, I had a 44-year, uh, um, I've worked in CEO offices all those, that time, assisting CEOs. And um, I've just left that in December and going full-time with my writing and my teaching and my coaching. And so I'm going to have a lot more time for Dave and I to be together. I'm going to have a lot more flexibility. And we are, like you, when COVID, we have all these things that we want to go and places we haven't seen and things we want to do. So I don't think my happiest moment has happened yet. <laughs> I think it's still waiting for us. And um, if I didn't think that, I think it would be pretty sad. If, if I had to think that the happiest moment is over and done, I'd... no, thank you. <laughs> I've had great moments, but I still think the happiest ones are ahead. So tell me about empathy. Wow, you ask big questions, Sai. <laughs> um, 
Well, the word that came to mind is, is, is it's priceless. Because whatever you're experiencing, whether, okay, like that, well, like I said, what about my mom? Dave's empathy to come and be there and be my strength. Or if you're just having the best day of your life and somebody can empathize with your joy and just, you know, um, celebrate with you and, and, and get into that space of wonder and joy and excitement. I mean, when we get to share those moments with people, it just seems to like multiply them. So empathizing, actually me and uh, my person got connected and uh, she showing empathy and me showing empathy, right? Mm -hmm. So on each other is fantastic actually. The connection yes. is healthy, yes. but uh, the problem comes only when uh, she will show empathy on the person, on the other person, when uh, that per other person uh, instead of me. And she does what to you instead of you? Is that what you said? She's showing him. I mean, she's empathizing the other other person point of view or thoughts instead oh. of me. Um, I'm sorry that it hurt. That, that um, suddenly disconnected me. Like, yeah, you know, I just felt like I went away from her world. The question would be that I would want to know is in that moment, did you need her empathy? Or Obviously. was it just the fact? Oh, okay. Obviously, uh, She's connected to me and uh, she, instead of, she, she don't need to show, I mean, she don't need to be empathetic, but instead of uh, uh, me, the person who is against to me, or who is uh, against to my thought, is, who is against to my thought, when that happens, there uh, I feel like disconnected and that happens to her too. When I do that with other person. When you empathize with anybody but each other? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Rather um, than being empathizing the partner. I, I personally um, believe that empathizing with people is, is um, an unlimited capacity. If I empathize with you it doesn't mean I don't have empathy for someone else and the same is true if I empathize with them it doesn't mean I don't empathize it just means I'm a person that is capable of recognizing another person's situation and choosing to support them I actually that's a lot of people have told me I'm a very empathetic person I don't I don't have to know you well just like when you said you had been hurt. I mean, immediately I was like, I'm sorry. And I mean that. I mean, I, that doesn't mean I don't have any empathy to give to my husband today. Okay. It's just a way of interacting with people and, and letting people know, I see you. I see you and I care about you in this moment, you know, and that's, that's a good thing. If you think what, about that, we could. Hmm? What, what if the caring in, uh, increases? That sounds like insecurity. <laughs> Yeah. That's when you have to know and be able to talk about with your partner that, you know, when uh, that when something happens like that, that that's who's like my husband knows I'm a very empathetic person. Yeah. And, Even and my he, girl too. That's my <laughs> problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and women are, um, uh, what's the short version of this for you? Women put as much <laughs> importance on their feelings as men put on their thoughts. So that's why a lot of women are so much more empathetic because um, our feelings, this, this essence of life in the center of us is what drives us. And so we're much more aware of the feelings of others going on around us. Men can be very empathetic, but they're much more thought driven, logical driven, you know, um, 
we, my husband and I have a joke now that we understand it. When I get upset about something, he, you know, he will, he will bring out logic and truth to try and fix it for me. And what I really need is somebody just to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that hurts, you know, and just, <laughs> and whole, you know, it's just, it, it's just the difference in how we're wired. And again, it, when I didn't understand it, I thought he was a jerk. I thought, can't you see I'm hurting? Why are you trying to give me logic and truth? You know, and now that I understand it, it's like, oh, he's trying to provide for me. He's trying to, you know, give me some answers so I can get this thing resolved. And it's, it's just totally different because I understand it. But um, as far as the fact that it bothers you that he's empathetic, empathetic with other people, you just need to have that conversation. You know, I'll, I'll what, give you I'll I'll give you an example. So uh, I need the, my person to be with me at that particular time. Mm-hmm. And uh, instead of being with me, that person is being uh, doing some other work or uh, being with uh, some other person. Okay, so which means uh, she uh, when she says that I'm I'm empathizing uh, some other's uh, feelings, and then mm-hmm. she, I wanted her to be with me like obviously. Did you did you right? tell her, or was that an expectation? Had you made I it said, clear to her? I said. I said, but she said, I will do this. I will do this. So that, mm-hmm. that happened recently. And uh, that happened recently. And uh, she disconnected the call. And she disconnected she, she the call. The... She okay, disconnected yeah. the call. Okay. She disconnected okay. the call. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, I was very angry. And, because she's very busy mm. in watching TV. Or she, mm. she, I said that you are more interested in watching television and uh, instead of uh, talking with me or because I'm waiting for you from three hours. Mm. But you don't have empathy here. So mm. when you, when, like you said, most of the women have feelings and more empathizing things. Mm-hmm. So when she's more interested in watching TV, making me wait for three, three hours, that actually matters. My three hours matters. And waiting yes. for her, thinking about her not eating food. Yes. I have shown yes. her my plate that uh, mm. that the food that food become cold mm-hmm. and hot hot burg food, and uh, the tea became cold. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I she didn't. She's not uh, uh, in a situation to listen to me. Mm. Because she's like, I want to go. I just want to go. I want to go. And just I never seen like her. Uh, like that before. That is, that was the first situation which I encountered, and uh, I said, "You are different uh, this day." So mm-hmm. you destroyed all my beliefs on you. Oh. You destroyed all my uh, uh, all my thoughts, the positive thoughts that you accept me like I am, and uh, you mm-hmm. will. But in this particular situation, you were stubborn. You were mm. just telling that I will do this, and uh, after that I left her. I didn't. I said when she was ready to talk with me, I said I am not ready. Mm. I am very busy now. I said, can we talk for half an hour? No, I am very busy. I am not going to talk now. And she said, she is calling me. She she messaged me at four to five times, and I got through calls. But I, I, I just shifted my mind and just studying or doing my work. But she's disturbing. And then I stopped that work because that work was important for me than like uh, she, ha- she uh, the, the TV show was, documentary was important to her. Mm-hmm. So I, I gave the same example. If you are right, I'm right. Mm. If you are right in your perspective, I'm right in my perspective. I just want to, sometimes you won't understand if, you, if I say I should do it. In order mm-hmm. to make you understand and make you feel what I felt. So this is and uh, I can do that. It is not that I will wait for you for a long time. I, it is not that. You know, I'm waiting mm-hmm. for you because I love you. That doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you will, whatever you do, I will accept. That is not going to work in connection, I said. Whatever you do, if you do, you know, if you think that, Making me wait 
and sorry also she said sorry okay sorry so that is not she said sorry. i said you sorry right she said sorry. you know sorry the way she is telling sorry what is mm-hmm. sorry i have shown her the gif gif images which are, which will be there in the mobile sorry mm-hmm. means please forgive me i won't do mm-hmm. this again mm-hmm. i will not do it. sorry i said you sorry okay i said you sorry so do you know the do you know the importance of the uh, word called sorry i said i gave her a, a, a class on that day about sorry i have mm-hmm. gave uh, sent her uh, uh, downloading the images uh, and i have sent her multiple gifs actually she is not feeling sorry for what she say, she did and she don't mm-hmm. want to say sorry but only she is telling sorry because i see she she is thinking that i feel comfortable if i say that word word is not point word don't create impact i am watching your expressions yeah. your 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 feeling sorry or you are just throwing out the word which have no no feeling i want word from the feeling and if you are not feeling okay fine and you i will make you feel sorry i will mm-hmm. make you wait you will wait for me some day you have to talk not today two days after the one week after one year after two years you will talk i will make you wait because in order to make you understand i have to do the same act so i did that worked that worked and she said sorry and she she came and uh, telling telling me that you actually want me to tell sorry right you want you always wanted me to tell not always i'm talking about that particular situation and the way you are telling sorry is very very i am not feeling like you are feeling sorry so that's what happened recently and she she know this she know that mm-hmm. i waited for a long time and i created impact in her with my act by not caring her for some time mm-hmm. and uh, when she is messaging me i didn't care and then i i want to know her if uh, i don't care her how she feels i i i i wanted to uh, know her that so yeah that that worked actually you know recently what was the last sentence that worked that worked that worked it worked she learned the lesson um i'm sorry that you both went through that side that sounds very painful um i haven't I haven't found for myself that it works well to try to hurt the other person the way they hurt me. Um it you you get into situations that you have to decide what's most important to you is um you need to be respected for sure. You can tell her when you Yeah, I'm chose... stopping you here. I forgot okay. to tell you one important line. Okay. Uh yeah, and then so i i said i said this shows that you know you can tell me in in, in a different way the way mm-hmm. you are expressing you can watch documentary i'm not saying no to that yeah i'm not against you to your documentary yeah you can you can do that but the way you're talking i'm against to that i'm yeah. against to the way you are expressing mm-hmm. so this destroyed all my beliefs on you since mm-hmm. we didn't meet until today we we are thinking to meet but mm-hmm. if you create this kind you create you destroyed all my beliefs and is it sai why sai this is why you are linking this this situation with everything that uh, we we was how was uh, how was i with you but you know we didn't even met we 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 still are uh, talking just we didn't uh, met mm-hmm. but you are doing mm-hmm. this kind of act may disconnect you may destroy mm-hmm. the connection because the the way you reacted in a way that you didn't reacted before that's why the reason yeah this she was inconsistent this mm-hmm. is completely different of yours mm-hmm. you are, you you are different completely in this particular situation i'm very sorry about it you can tell the expressing ways i wrote a blog post on my website saying that expressing ways you can tell the sorry in in number of ways you have thousand ways to tell sorry and you can t- express in different ways but it depends on you are you are not interested that is what shows that you know you are yes. not at all interested you are not interested in giving the your so i thought yes. that she is giving me a lot of value all these days mm-hmm. i thought that she is like you know praising me or giving me compliment and you know why is one particular situation everything went into the dustbin 
that uh, particular expression still i can't forget it i want that uh, her to see this i didn't for, i can't forget that visual i have put that visual for 3 days even she said sorry for that i said her and sai why you are carrying that why you are carrying that that already mm-hmm. happened i said you sorry but the impact that you created on me because i took you very seriously right i take your words very seriously i take your actions very seriously i watch you every day i see your expression mm-hmm. maybe because of taking you seriously that uh, uh, you know attacked me when you when you responded in this way you can tell in the other way you are loving me right is this is not the way you are you should uh, uh, tell to the person whom you are loving so mm-hmm. i didn't find love uh, in the way you are expressing so that is a insult i mm. don't know how you will love after uh, this you will love but i may not i may not because that created a large impact i'm talking about it still in this video mm-hmm. you can imagine the impact that uh, she created but yeah but i understood but i said okay but i thought not to enlarge it but i just wanted to tell what what do you say about the situations like this um I want to be very careful, Sai, because I don't know you and I don't know her. So I just I want to give a thought out response. Um, we have talked a lot today about understanding and misunderstanding. And I'm wondering from what I'm hearing, because she acted so differently, if maybe you're misunderstanding her motivation. Maybe. 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 She was having a very bad day and she didn't handle it well. M- maybe that's that's it, you know. She messed up. That could be one possibility. Um maybe you know, like I said I don't know you. Maybe there was something in your past when somebody did something like that to you and it triggered that pain and brought it all forward. There are okay. a lot of reasons when Um, this is not true but okay okay yeah um but this is a possibility for people yes, you're saying yes it's, it's a possibility yes so yeah um but i think that just watching you and the way you reacted i think the most likely thing is there was a huge misunderstanding between the two of you 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 still sounds like don't understand why she acted the way she acted and she's not understanding why you're responding the way you're responding and so it may require a conversation where you listen to one another you you decide you um um create a safe zone basically you create a safe zone like we we are deciding we are going to spend whatever amount of time you think it will be a half hour an hour and i'm not going to interrupt you you explain to me how that day unfolded for you and what that was like for you you don't you don't respond you don't correct you don't do anything else then the other person gets the same opportunity to explain how that day unfolded for them and you're listening the whole time for what matters what's important and what that person's caring about what's happening to see what you can learn about that person sitting in front of you and then you have to make the decision okay i can see how that happened and we can either come to an agreement that if something like this comes up in the future this is how we'll deal with it or we can come to the agreement you know and this this shows us that we are not as compatible as we thought but you don't have to guess having those types of conversations you don't have to guess and that's better for both of you right you 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 want to be in this relationship if it's as good as it seemed to be but if if it's not going to be something that's sustainable for both of you you don't want to invest more time in it okay okay i wish i could give you an easy answer but um people are not easy <laughs> we're very complicated and very multi-layered <laughs> okay and also i want to give you one more observation now uh, in one of the videos uh, uh she was uh, uh connecting with uh, the author's thoughts with whom i did the video 
and uh, okay. with whom I was against too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I respect him for what he is, but I don't agree. Mm-hmm. I don't agree, but I didn't say to him that I don't agree. I didn't uh, show my expression. No, no, I, it's it's it. He have his own thoughts, and a lot mm-hmm. of people uh, likes him for what he is. Right, so that is my personal opinion, like or dislike. So mm-hmm. I said the dislike. So, uh, she she said, uh, uh, what he's telling, right? I said, you're talking only by seeing the forty five minutes video mm. or fifty minutes video. You don't know what that person uh, will implement the thoughts or not in his life. Mm-hmm. You know, this is forty five minutes. He can't tell that what he's doing is completely. He's he's going to do everything that he says. You know, if he do what everything he says, it is extraordinary. You know, that is yeah. fantastic. Uh, but uh, you you don't know, and and I I know him personally. That you don't know. I know okay. about his personal life that he shared mm-hmm. with me, and uh, he got divorced. Uh, he was disconnected, and she was talking, and he is talking about connectivity in the video. how oh, to connect okay. and all and uh, and my debate was with my girl was how can a person who disconnected with the person can talk about the connectivity mm-hmm. he already failed in connecting with uh, a person right so you don't mm-hmm. know that you are seeing that yeah. he is very good in explaining the connectivity right so you should know completely about a person then you tell i will agree mm-hmm. yeah but uh, you talking about 45 minutes you don't i want you to see i'm not saying that agree me but you you should know completely about a person i mean yeah. the experiences or the book that he wrote or his mm-hmm. personal life is different from what he is writing in his book yeah he won't and, write and, the same in the book right and anything sai like what i've said today what whatever people put on your interviews you have to check it out for yourself you know you you have to test it to see if it works for you you have to um you know maybe part of it works for you maybe part of it doesn't but just accepting blindly like you say if somebody does an interview and say okay this is going to make my life perfect no <laughs> you, you you have to check it out yeah i'm not uh, i don't have problem with that person he's extraordinary mm-hmm. he's yeah. i respect him he respects me Mm-hmm. we have very good connection we have extraordinary connection he don't judge me but the problem is with the third person yeah but uh, she made me to talk about it that's why i said but uh, i don't have problem with that person because he respects me like what i am that's why the reason he was in my show and he comes and to me yeah he comes to me whenever i say i res- i have huge respect but yeah. uh, when when this kind of uh, i'm just telling this because I want to talk about everything, so yeah. that I want to talk about everything, so that she will also know. Even in the from through my videos, also she will know that I will I have this kind of thinking and what I thought, so that uh, from different mediums she will know. And this also matters. This also matters, and she also understands the listening. She will listen to me through this video. So I want her. I want her what I felt. and uh, you are the right person uh, with whom i can say this kind of a scenario i i and i don't feel yeah. bad or i don't feel uh, mm-hmm. anything i'm i just wanted to tell with you because i am feeling comfortable to tell with you <laughs> oh thank you sai i appreciate <laughs> that when you were talking one thing popped into my mind that, that it is hard for women if, if they haven't had somebody pointed out to them women i, I think i i mentioned it we listen to agree or disagree that makes us feel safe if we agree or disagree so it's really hard for women until somebody points it out to understand how men can respect one another and not agree with one another really hard for women to get that concept okay and uh because agreement is so important to us agreement is like okay i'm safe if i agree with you i'm safe if if um let's use the extreme if the tiger comes and you and i agree you're probably going to protect me from the tiger If we disagree and the tiger comes, you're probably going to leave me to be lunch meat. <laughs> that's that's what our instincts are telling us, and and so it's it's hard. I I did not get it. It was actually a really big um, um, place of disconnect for for my husband and I, 
um, I'm obviously passionate about people's hearts and their hearts being healed and whole and uh, them having hope. And, and I've taken a lot of courses and done a lot of study. And my husband has completely supported me spending the time on that and investing the funds that were necessary, but he had absolutely no interest in taking any of those courses with me oh, yeah. <laughs> or participating in any of those courses with me. And for the longest time, I was like, every time he would say, no, he didn't want to do a class with me. It was like, it literally felt like he was pushing me away okay. because, <laughs> you know, like he's, he's uh, you know, he obviously respects me because he's, you know, he's, that respects what I'm doing, but he's not connecting with me. He's pushing me away. He's not doing the same thing. And when, when my very first class that I went to, they were talking about, have you ever seen either on TV in real life, two guys have a fight and then they get up and they go out and have a beer together because they still respect one another. They disagreed, but they still respect one another. When that light bulb went off for me, cause I'd seen it, I was like, oh my gosh, all these years that I thought he was pushing me away and didn't get what I was doing. He's been respecting me. He never asked me not to spend my time on it. He never said, don't spend the money on it. He, he totally respected me and what I was doing. Wow. I was like, oh my gosh. And so I, I really try to help women see just because he doesn't agree doesn't mean he doesn't respect you. When you understood that. The very first class I went to back in 2014. I mean, how much time you took, uh, it took for you to understand when he's pushing you and uh, when you realize that he's not pushing, actually he's encouraging you. Um, probably, it was like an aha moment. So I went from not understanding it to understanding it with probably within a matter of like, well, instantly I, I saw the validity in it and that, and I was in the class by the end of that afternoon, I got it. I was like, oh my gosh, he's okay. respecting me. You know, you know, when you get a new thought, you kind of have to, you know, go, what is this? And then by the end of the afternoon, I was like, oh my gosh. And then I, then it was kind of like a, um, a cascade. I started seeing it with other men in my life that I, you know, had felt disconnected from. I thought, oh no, actually they just thought differently, disagreed with what I was doing, but they respect me. They love me. So it, it's, it's been pretty huge. So you, you understood the, uh, by, the, by the end of the afternoon. Uh, mm -hmm. And I understood after three days. The same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few more years practice than you saw. <laughs> it takes time for me. I'm not, I don't have 37 years, but still three days is a big time. It is a big uh, time. It, it, it is a small time. You know, I understood yeah. very fast. Not after long time. You know, I understood mm -hmm. and I came because my the, the positivity between me and my girl is so mm -hmm. strong. Yes. So, so uh, you know, the connectivity between me mm -hmm. and my girl is very, very strong in such a way that any situation or any, any it can be any, any means any. The definition of any means any. Mm -hmm. Anything that happens, we connect. Mm -hmm. It can be any, any, anything that happens, we can, you know, uh, I don't know how that is happening. I think we met uh, the right persons in our life, but I, yeah. I actually gave two examples, which are, which, which created fiction, but there are hundreds of positive things, only these two things, because maybe human mm -hmm. being things, uh, uh, talks only about the 1%, not about the 99%, yeah. but 99% yeah. is very big. I can't. Explain each and every situation in which she made me smile, I made her smile, mm -hmm. and uh, we made each other smile each other, and we uh, watched a lot of songs with each other, a lot of uh, we exchanged a lot of beautiful thoughts and think thinking mm -hmm. about uh, larger than life. There are huge things. That's why the reason we we came back to each other. That's like mm -hmm. I took very exactly. less time because it's okay, fine, it's okay, fine. Nothing, nothing was wrong. So I think. Uh, that's what nine, when when there is huge percentage of connectivity i don't think uh, the the small fiction you know i don't think uh, you know uh, that's why i started pulling myself down only for her in my life mm -hmm. to tell sorry i i actually don't say sorry i i used to be i used to be like oh that's fine yeah so yeah i i, I don't know where i have stopped but um 
uh, I was talking more about myself and my uh, experience. I think uh, you should talk uh, more about the connection and you should talk about your book that you have published. Okay. Um, I uh, wrote the book last year um, because, I, like I said, I've been helping people find hope being a coach that way for over 20 years. The, the part about men and women has just been the last five or six. But uh, during the pandemic, um, I really, it came to me one day that people are feeling so overwhelmed and they don't know how to get back to hope. And that's why I talk about connecting the present, what we're going through to the past, because our past actually impacts how we experience the present. And when you can make those connections, you can have hope for your future. Uh -huh. And um, I was able to fit that into 51 pages. I tried to keep it as simple as possible so that it's kind of like a pocket guide <laughs> when you need a reminder of, okay, I'm, I'm feeling stuck. I'm getting the same results in my life. Uh, I'm feeling frightened. Um, whatever it is, you can pull out this book and get some quick reminders. Okay, how do I figure out what my point of view is in this moment? Okay. And how would I be able to change it? What, what you know, seems like a valid way to change it so that life would be better? Now, in my book, I give this specific example. I was, you know, everybody was facing the pandemic, but I was also coming up on retiring. Um, and it was two of my big things in the past have been able to perform well enough for people to love me before I understand that that was not actually love. <laughs> and how, how would I be able to be who I am if I'm not working? You know, all the questions that go through your head when you're going to retire, like if I'm not doing this job, who am I? And using the tools that I give in the book, I was able to see that um, actually I can be who I am regardless of what I do. Okay. I, I am hope, love, joy, authenticity, and healing, regardless yeah. of what I'm doing. That's what I bring to my world. That's who I am. And, I, and whether I'm retired or not, I can be that. So then I can have peace that way, right? And as I looked around at the pandemic and some of the fear that was creating was like, I can choose to be afraid or I can look at all the amazing ways people are starting to adapt. People are learning how to beat this and overcome it and how they're reaching out to one another. And, and I could see it in my husband and I, we were finding new ways like, you know, to communicate and to approach it. And it was like, okay, I have a choice. What's my point of view gonna be? This is the end of the world and it's horrible or we're gonna come out of this stronger and wiser and better. So. so you have huge experience. Uh, actually, I respect your experience. Because uh, Thank you. you, you, what the situations are, you know, extreme, the, the less situation, the extremely positive situation, you might have faced all kind of situations and all kind of uh, emotions in your life. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that is one of the reasons why you are talking, you know, very, very calm. Like, I can, I can feel uh, the silence when you are um, silent. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have a question here. Why okay. this came? Why so much listening skill that you have? Why you built that skill? Why did I burst that skill? Well, I think, Sai, because I didn't an understand about love, I thought I had to perform. I was constantly listening to people to find out what I could do to make them love me. Wrong. I learned, you know, to be a very good listener. But then as I started into, like I, I went to this class where I told you the line that, you know, if you have to do anything to be loved, that's not love. You know, love is accepting yourself and the people around you just the way you are. That so rattled my world. It took me a couple of years of really wrestling with that to figure out how to live, not being a doer. 
And as my own healing started to take place with that, I wanted other people to have it. And I found the best way that I could help people was to listen to them and hold space for them to be able to um, say whatever their heart needed to say, however it needed to say it, and know it wouldn't be judged. And then offer whatever I, uh, tools or whatever came to mind to connect them with the eternal so that they could get hope, get healing, get uh, refreshment. And that's what I did from 98 through to 2014. And then I started on this new journey with learning about how to help men and women understand one another better. And I've added that in to how I listen to people and, and help them. So. So understanding actually helped you to be very healthy mentally. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not that simple. Like I said, just now understanding, you know, everybody says understanding is very good. We should understand, understand, understand. We understand we can solve any problem. The only thing is understand, understand. But why implementing is very tough. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, the first person or thing you need to understand is yourself. You have to be willing to look at yourself and not be afraid of what you find. Um, the, the very first time I started approaching this stuff back in 1998, I got this picture of myself. I was like a closet that was so stuffed full of all the things, the hurts, the anger, the misunderstandings that I'd just been stuffing down inside rather than expressing them. And there just was no more room. It was okay. like there was no more room for anything, good or bad. I was just, and I was about to explode. Okay. And, and that's when I went to this class and started hearing about um, what love really is and working through the process of, of just learning um, how to love myself, how to let go of things in the past, like the the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. I had been living insanely <laughs> for years. Wow. We all do, right? I had yeah. done the same things over and over and over and expected a different result. And I was finally like, okay, I I am I'm ready to try something different. Um I, I it's a pretty lengthy story. I, I put it all out in my book about how I literally had an experience one night when somebody was trying to help me, trying to facilitate me working through my things that I, I just felt like I was at the edge of this precipice, this cliff, and it was like a dark abyss in front of me. And I, um, one of the things I was dealing with at the time is I got a, a chronic diagnosis with um, a health problem, fibromyalgia that I've had to deal with ever since that time. And I was like, I can't go back to life without it. And I can stay where I'm at, you know, basically left or right, or I can step off into the unknown. And um, I, apparently, according to the person that was next to me, I literally jumped into the unknown. I surprised them quite a bit because I had my eyes closed at the time. But it was, it was really an amazing experience. Uh, the person that was with me grabbed me and hugged me, but it felt like the eternal was hugging me, had met me there and to hold me. And, and it's really become a life um, attitude for me that when I get to the edge of all the light I know, I'm actually in a very good place because the answers I don't have and that I need are waiting for me in the unknown. So that's me in a nutshell. Can I say you are the example for the, uh, can I say that uh, you are the practical example of the word called understanding and uh, can I say the, uh, you are the visual representation of uh, the word called understanding? Oh, thank you, Sai. Absolutely. Woo. <laughs> I'm going to listen to that a lot. <laughs> thank you so much. <sighs> Just have to soak that in. <laughs> actually, I'm feeling it. You know, actually, I can't show it uh, with my emotion because uh, you have huge experience. You know, I don't have an emotion which can uh, uh, which can tell 
you that i respect your 37 years of understanding in a single emotion or in a single word or in a single sentence or in this video because i'm not yeah i'm very sorry i can't do that but i just used two sentences which may uh may like at least uh, 0.00001% <laughs> can uh, uh be the truth thank you so much sai i appreciate that i truly do um for you to be able to see that uh, in the little bit of time that we've spent together that means a tremendous amount to me um like i said i'm just getting started on really trying to do this full time and so i am so appreciative of this opportunity to get the word out with you to have this conversation and to be able to um share it with people um cuz i do i just want to connect people with hope that's my website is called hope without limits because um our circumstances don't tell us whether or not there's hope so our point of view i think the uh, world needs to buy you with a huge amount of money <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll i'll say yes to that i will accept that the world needing me and paying me <laughs> this is good so but um yeah i yeah that's what i want to do and so i appreciate this opportunity to get started here with you You're my first YouTube in, uh, interview. Okay. I don't think I did justice uh, to you by just doing two hours of video because I don't think I can present you uh, because uh, of the limited knowledge or uh, limited time that I have or uh, the limited thoughts that uh, uh, that I have exchanged with you in this video. I don't think uh, I have shown you completely. maybe some like very small amount but still i'm very happy for the for the conversation and i have a uh, two to three questions if i if you allow me to ask i will ask okay go ahead <laughs> so like i said uh, i just said uh, the few situations but there are thousands of situations or conditions or the the experiences uh, that uh, i have that made me to feel uh, extremely positive uh, which mm-hmm. actually will not make me care much about the the small the minute amount of negative mm-hmm. i think uh, this is because of the effect the person that created in me mm-hmm. the strong impact and the strong positive effect uh, because uh, you can see me you are seeing me like extremely positive you have saw you have seen my work i selected mm-hmm. that person means she will be equal to me mm-hmm. right she will be equal yeah. to me but she is in yeah. a different job simple yeah. she is in a different job but still she she have that same percentage of intelligence level and have good listening skills like i have but there are in few in in very very one or two situation but in thousands of in thousands of situations she was like wonderful human being i don't even thought that i would get this kind of a person in my life maybe i did something great in my past life mm-hmm. that is why the reason i got this like very very like whatever i talk she talks she talks about authenticity mm-hmm. she talks about loyalty she talks about honesty she talks about relationships she talks about uh, even the cells in the body the importance mm-hmm. of the cells we did a video on the topic called purpose of life mm-hmm. together so she came with that topic and i felt like wow she is like wow purpose of life is not can we cannot put in that 30 minutes or 40 minutes like we cannot say this is very very large but she got that talk thought to talk about the purpose and she was telling mm-hmm. about even a plant has a purpose why we are <laughs> talking like this this has a purpose i we are talking like this we are thinking about we there is there is somebody there is some strong reason for us to be connected because yes. something is there we are connected mm-hmm. like this and we are talking like this because there is a purpose for this so when she talks like i will be silent i'll be a listener like i don't i want to watch her i want to watch her i want to oh my god <laughs> <laughs> amazing she's an amazing woman so positivity uh, you know the balancing 
the mm-hmm. connection means balancing right yeah. so how how that balancing um <clears throat> I, the first thought that's coming into my mind is that um to let go of perfection if you don't have a unspoken expectation of perfection um or if you um yeah just just let it go because perfect is a cruel taskmaster if it's never enough right because even if you yeah. do something perfectly yeah you could of. be more perfect so the same with our pe- with the people around us we can't ask them to be or expect them to be perfect um we we can't be perfect so you extend that same grace to the person next to you right okay they made a mistake they had a bad day they misunderstood me whatever it might be that's how you can balance because you do um what what i call a, a worth it calculation you know how much time energy money have i invested in this person in this relationship and how much time energy and money has it cost me and you know what have i not done because i've been in this relationship you put all that together and if it's still worth it you've got something pretty special nice <laughs> so you already said i think you said about a lot of uh, things and uh, you said about your book is connection mm-hmm. yeah the the name of it is connecting the present okay. to the past to find hope for your future it's on amazon so if people want to go look for it the easiest way to find it is just to google my last name lawba l a w b a u g h and the book will pop right up and you can buy it either an ebook or a paperback whatever people prefer what is the response that you got for connecting It hasn't been that much yet, Sai, to be honest, because I'm new at marketing. Okay. <laughs> the people that have read it, everybody that's read it, I'm getting five-star reviews. The other people that have read it that haven't, you know, wanted to write a review have told me that it's made such an impact in their lives and it's taken something really difficult and made it really simple for them to understand. And so, um, I haven't been able to get it to as many people as I'd like, but the people that has reached, they have been very, very positively impacted. this video is enough for you to uh, for for market i think yeah yeah this is the year i can start to focus on it so. because uh, in this uh, video you didn't talk about uh, your book you talk about the connection actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is what uh, will be there in your book yeah yeah so, so. The, the people are always uh, the most important to me oh i just got a message that my AirPods are going to die pretty soon. So is there any other um questions you have before I need to sign off for today? This is this is good. This is very good length video. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So So yeah. So have you seen any previous videos of mine on YouTube? I did. Um I uh, there was one I really liked and I made a note of the gentleman's name. Hold on. Um his name was Aaron Dunn. and i love the way you guys discussed uh what would be the the qualities that would make up the four walls of your village i thought that was so cool i i wrote yours down you said you want a development communications connection and honesty and i thought i would like to live in that village but if, if you wanted to come and live in my village i would want hope love integrity and courage those would be the four, four walls of my village so what what if i ask you the same question What if, what if I ask what if I ask you the same question? Um, about what? About the walls? The same question that uh, we uh, asked for each other in, in that video. I mean, me and that Aaron. Mm-hmm. What if I ask you the same question? I'm asking you. Okay, well that that's what I was saying. The walls of my village, the four things that the walls would be would be hope, love, integrity, and courage. with all this for you will pull people into your village yeah that's that's where i want to live i want to live with people that value those values and that that want to live that way and that that's yeah that's what i want i think for the first one everybody will come 
I don't think love. <laughs> <laughs> and rest three, the five or ten percent. Yeah. Out of hundred. Well. Yeah. If you know, if my definition of love being acceptance, I would think people would want to come to a place where they're accepted just the way they are. Awesome. There is yeah. a species who is living in United States like me. I understood after this this video. How did you? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank so, you again, Sai, for the opportunity. And um, I may, I'm probably be in touch to find out how I use this video for myself. I'll get I'll ask for your expertise after we finish our recording. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, my questions are over. So mm -hmm. thanks, uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is huge time, more than two hours. I didn't do two hour video uh, from last three to four months. The first time after a hundred videos, maybe hundred or one fifty videos, I'm doing two hour video, and I felt very very comfortable talking with you and asking you questions because I thought uh, your your visual say itself made me in the beginning that I'm going to ask huge questions and uh, I'm going to get a huge content in this video. So and it. It it happened because uh, the the connectivity is very very important uh, uh, topic and uh, and very very important uh, for a human being to have peaceful healthy and uh, positive and uh, if you want to grow the connectivity is very important even in mm -hmm. the career wise career if you, if you want to do something creative great things the connectivity mm -hmm. and which is which is a great. Uh, topic uh, that uh, you said and uh, it is a great on on which topic you wrote a book so i i think everybody uh, who who will uh, watch this video have to go should go and will go obviously because uh, they will know, they wanted to know because they will have experiences right so they want to know what you said what is your point of view how you are looking at it and how you explained it and definitely that is going to be a massive uh, success for you for sure and uh, thank you uh, yeah and uh, can i put this video on my youtube channel on social media on internet with your permission oh yes yes and then you can tell me how to share it i would love that <laughs> yeah once i edit it it takes some time i will edit mm -hmm. it and i'll i'll share the link with you thank you so much sai thank you very very much i've had fun today I hope uh, you will do what you love in your life and uh, 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 do uh, thing. I mean, implement whatever you wanted in your life, and, and I want you to continue doing what uh, makes you feel happy. Thank you. I will deal. You do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I will remember you for sure. All right. Thank you, yeah. Sai. Yeah. Take care. All right. Bye bye. Bye. bye.